Automation is not going to replace anyone's job. Not even AI is going to replace anyone's job. Welcome to the Let's Talk Business podcast, a project of the PTEX Group. Gain valuable, actionable ideas from the world's top business leaders to help you take the next step in your business journey. And now, here is your host, Manny Hoffman. Coming to you from the PTEX headquarters in Brooklyn, New York, this is the podcast for no-nonsense advice to help you learn, grow, and lead. Today, I'm so excited to be speaking with the former chief automation officer of the PTEX Group and a great friend, Nathan Weil. Nathan Weil is a self-identified tech geek. He founded Flow Digital in 2018, providing headache-free automation support so business owners could stop struggling with SaaS tools and repetitive tasks and direct their full energy towards business growth. In our interview, I discussed the importance of automation and business processes by identifying repetitive tasks and setting clear objectives. Then, Nathan highlights examples of automation for lead generation, internal processes, and follow-up procedures to see what you could also automate in your business. I also discussed the common misconception about automation, such as automation equal job loss, too expensive for small businesses, or taking away the personal touch. All of those things are being discussed in our conversation. We also discuss using automation to save time and energy, improving efficiency when it comes to client communication. This and so much more only on the Let's Talk Business Podcast. Let's get right to our conversation with Nathan Weil. Nathan Weil, thank you so much for joining me on the Let's Talk Business Podcast. So good to be here. Yeah, so we're friends and we have been working together for a long time and I think it's time to bring you on the show. The What you do at the agency is now more important than ever, um, which we'll get to, what you do exactly. And um, I figured that there our listeners, they turn to the show for a lot of mindset stuff, but also for a lot of practical tactics to use in their business. So today we'll be First will be a part of it will be mindset, understanding of how you go about automation and everything you need to do to automate the processes in your business. But at the same time, we'll go into some technicals to see where to look out for what type of processes to see if you could use automation. And today we'll touch a little bit on AI as well, how that actually goes together with automation today. Um, so it's not just a shiny object, but it's a little connected to automation as well. But for our listeners that don't know you or may not know you, tell us a little bit about your origin story. Yep, it's an interesting story. I used to work for a Brooklyn-based marketing agency called Ptex Group. And, uh, and I, I know that company. <laughs> yes, I know, I know it well. And I everything that I know about automation, I learned at Ptex. So yeah, as, as director of operations, I noticed the so many manual tasks that, that go into the day-to-day -day and the task switching and the, and the jumping between apps and exporting CSV files to build dashboards and, and between so many apps and, uh, like, and marketing, of course, email marketing, podcast, onboarding, all, all the good stuff. We started automating stuff. So, and uh, I saw the value and at some point, uh, the, during the time of COVID, I, I went into you and uh, told you that uh, it's time it's time to start my own agency. I, I realized that there's a major need for this, and I'll never forget it. You say you said, Pintex will become your first client, and uh, it still is. <laughs> yeah, it still is, and uh, I'm forever grateful for this because I was able to start with with a client. Uh, already and and that was a huge help i appreciate the kind words and uh, we have only great memories uh, for you being part of the team and also helping us with automation like uh, i remember going back years ago um when we started doing content creation uh, even way before the podcast i'm talking about you know ptex is now 23 years old uh, we're talking about literally 15 years ago when we were looking for the first CRM. And I started saying, you know, we have different services in our company. We have a branding and marketing. We have the call center. We have different services. And leads are coming in. And to really start segmenting our list and understanding who is coming from where, especially at that time, we did a lot of downloadable type of content. And at that time, um, we were looking for a software. And 
the first thing I said, you know, I think the name automation wasn't yet uh, born, like it wasn't a, a category, but I said, you know, it has to be a better way than manual Excel files in different uh, formats and different, you know, systems to be using for different things. But today it's a whole new ball game. You know, it's almost like a crime if you see a business owner not utilizing automation to a degree in order to help them with their systems and processes. So for the audience that doesn't understand what automation is all about or how it affects them, because it's more of a technical term, what would you say is is automation? How would you describe it in a sentence? So yeah, automation is a buzzword, especially, especially nowadays. And uh, to simplify it, it's simply like, if you have digital processes, you have apps, software that you use in your business, it's to to put it simply, a lot of a lot of the time, these processes can be done automatically. So some people call it automations, some people call it integrations, but it's basically to make software talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if if I may, I'll just expand on that for our audience, which is um, you're already speaking about people understanding that they have software and now we want to have our software talk to each other. I think for our listeners to understand what automation is in the first place and the really the mindset of automation is that you are limited on the amount of time you have in your day. And if there's any part of the day that you're working on a task that potentially could be automated, you're wasting your energy and your time and burning calories on something that could be automated. And 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 we'll, we'll throughout the conversation we'll have some some I have some uh, like real life examples that we use in Ptex, and I think it's something that a lot of companies are now using. Now, what you mentioned is also worth uh, expanding on. You mentioned about software is talking to each other because. Once upon a time, a company that had the mindset, the business owner that had a mindset of, I want to automate things. I want to have a proper system um, that talk, that has all the data and has all the, the data points in our company. That would mean a custom software. I'm taking a developer. It's going to take six months. The, the developer tells me six months. It took six years or six or never finished or whatever it is because I had to come up with all the different things I need for my software. I'm talking about the business owners and then speak to a developer and start doing it and doing it this way and that way and doing everything to custom. Now, there's so many great platforms out there for different functions of the business, from the CRM to the sales, sales, you know, your sales management to marketing uh, or even micro systems that people use for their industries. Now, there is integrations that you mentioned before that could talk to each other, which means is we don't have to settle on a custom system. We could use a bunch of off the shelf and systems, and then the data could be syn- synced up from the different softwares with automation as well in the integration of the software. So I think for our listeners is to understand where automation and integration comes into play in daily, in daily activity in businesses. Have I said it right? Yes, yes, I love it. Uh, and, and you touched on a very important point with the, the fact that up until recently, only the big companies that were able to invest so, so much money in automations and integrations and the systematizing. And nowadays, like with no code, you can, you can do so much. It basically became accessible to everyone from like the smaller businesses to even for the larger businesses now take advantage of the easier ways of there is to, Im- to implement automation. Yeah. So let me ask you a, a question. So you do a lot of, um, you know, client consultation when somebody wants to know if they can automate it or what should they automate and so on and so forth. What would you say is the, the most significant misconception business owners have about the category of automation? So it's very important to note that not every, everything should be automated. A lot of uh, people, uh, companies, they, they feel like, okay, automation is, is a new thing, AI, let's automate everything. But uh, sometimes it's just, there needs to be some manual processes in place, you know, like, uh, especially when, with, with high touch communication. Sometimes like, you don't have to automate the actual communication, you can automate the reminder to, 
toward the phone call, you know, like, uh, so one misconception would be to, you know, to figure out what, what should be automated and most importantly, what shouldn't be automated. Great. Now, one of the things that I hear a lot when people hear the word automation or hear about systemizing things is they're going to, their business will lose their personal touch. How do you address that? That's a very common argument against automation that a lot of people, a lot of people say. However, it's just the opposite. If you are bogged down with manual tasks and notifications uh, all over, and uh, um, there is a study that I re- recently saw about context switching. If you work with with many apps and you keep switching between apps and between processes and between tasks, it takes up to 9.5, it can take up to 9.5 minutes to, to get back in the zone. Wow. So, yeah, and, and if you're constantly switching between tasks, there's no chance you can have the high touch with, with your clients that, that, that is necessary. And so I, I would argue it's just the opposite. With automation, you have the bandwidth, you have the, the peace of mind to, to focus on, on the high-touch uh, communication that, that requires. Exactly. Like, um, um, the, uh, especially like, like if sometimes you speak to salespeople, so you can ask the salesperson, how do you manage your leads? And they'll say, well, I, I remember my people, I, my people, I write it down on my phone or, or whatever type of format you have. But if you don't have segmentation, and be able to have reminders of who needs a call first. It's impossible um, to to manage, especially when you start building a larger list. Now, even if you do manage it, the time of effort that goes in every single morning. So imagine a salesperson has an hour a day to make cold calls or make follow-up calls to existing leads. But from that hour, half an hour goes to searching which person to call versus with automation, automation that that system will just, uh, you know, populate a list for him that these are the calls for today, all of a sudden you got a, a, a full hour to make the phone calls versus a half an hour of searching for the contact. Exactly. So important. So important. So for example, I, we've worked with a travel agency that books a lot of uh, trips and uh, they had the process that they call a week before the trip, they, they call their clients. So if you don't have automation in place, you know, the, the process would be like they go in, they open their list of bookings, they search by date, and they start searching, like, who, who do I need to call today? But with, with automation, you get a list the day, every, every in the morning, you get a list of people that you need to call that day. And you, you, should, you can just start calling instead of trying to, you know, to search. And uh, it basically eliminates all the manual work, to, to, do, to your point. Got it. Now, let's say some of you speak to someone, where's the first place a business owner should start looking to see what they could automate? Like, what's the process you would suggest a business owner to go through to, to see what they could possibly really automate? Yeah, great question. We typically start with the list of you know, software that they use, the tools. I have to check uh, technically wise if it's possible to automate at all. So, one place to check is on um, there's a tool called Zapier and Zapier is uh, allows you to build automation and they have a directory of over 7,000 apps that is integratable. It could you can build automation with it. So the first place we we encourage our clients is to see is your app listed in that directory and if not there are other places to check see the view API documentation. But uh, that's that's the first question. And what would be the second? Uh, so the second um, question you would ask a business owners is what systems and processes they use already in the company? Yeah. So to review the process that they want to automate. Sometimes a, a client would, would want to automate certain processes, but that doesn't make sense to automate. You know, like uh, the second thing is to, to see like how do you do it manually. How how is the process working manually currently, and does it make sense to automate or not? 
maybe we could go through some scenarios of different projects um, that you have helped automate, similar to what you mentioned about the travel agents, just to, f- to give people a sense of understanding. So on lead generation, what type of automation have you seen companies automate from getting, le- the, getting the leads process? Lead generation. So the, there are many things that can be done with, with lead generation. One, one that comes to mind is internal processes. So you get a lead, right? You can get a lead by somebody filling out the web, uh, a form on your website. You can get it by email. Some people get like buy leads as so of they, they get, they get leads distributed by email. So first of all, typically when you get a lead, you, you put it into your CRM. So that, that part, that process of adding the details to your CRM, that's a very common process to automate. So the logic may be, use the email address to check if that person already exists because you don't want duplicate contacts in your CRM, right? So that's one, like the outreach email, first initial email. So if somebody reaches out, there's no reason why you would have to send them an email, thank you for reaching out, here's my booking link, right? So that's something that can be automated. And maybe the follow-up email can also be uh, automated. I see you didn't book a meeting. Any questions I can answer? And from there, it goes manual, right? And once they book a, a, a meeting, uh, a thank you email um, for booking, and here is, here is your Zoom link, or looking forward to meet you at that, this and that address, you know? So that's, that's, that's part of uh, Legion. Got it. And and you mentioned about internal, um, which um, sometimes you have oversight of, of the amount of leads that came in. You could also automate um, for managerial purposes, like, uh, a, a, you know, a leader that needs to see what's happening in their sales funnels, in their lead generation funnels, what, what marketing works, that could also be automated. So notifications could go out to multiple people based on if this, then that type of scenarios which is also uh, an important thing. Like I know that in our sales process, um, we have something that when, which was automated. So I don't have to know every lead that comes in, but if there's a process where it hits uh, the CRM and then at one point um, the salesperson did not respond with a quote or did not respond with them, and then leadership would get notified that this is already three days without, without a response. Yeah. So then you could work with your team and say, you know what, there's a bunch of leads that did not respond. And sometimes manual will say, oh, I forgot to update that I did speak to the person. And sometimes they would say, yes, I totally forgot about this or I didn't get to it. And then you could take action. So every time you look at automation, look at it from the person doing the task or at the same time, the people that probably need to get reported on the task. So I think that's, uh, that's an important um, point to look at it. Definitely, definitely. And to add to that, we've built an automation for for somebody that when a lead sits in a certain stage in the CRM for X amount of days, it automatically reassigns that lead to a different salesperson. Oh, wow. So that that's, that's you know, like uh, a certain stage that like if it's not updated within like three days, that means that it wasn't touched, you know. So and, and also for internal processes, what we use internally is we 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 work with uh, many different software, many different apps. So not everyone on our team knows every app. So when a when a call comes, when a call is scheduled, uh, when a, a new request is is when we have a new inquiry regarding a specific software, and one of the questions is like which software do you like to talk about it searches a database of our team who from like who is, is specializes in that software and based on that it sends them their uh calendly link uh to book a session it's amazing and then keep in mind like like for just even as booking links and uh, people again more and more are taking it for granted because it's it became the norm but there's still a ton of people business people that don't understand the value of just having a calendar, just as basic as a calendar setup, and how many back and forth goes you know, every time you want to schedule a meeting, especially with multiple parties. You would send out the email back and forth versus here's the link and just schedule it. In particular, it's it's very important and it's very helpful when you're going through. Let's say you're looking to hire a person, 
and all of a sudden you're you want to do a brief intro calls with candidates that uh, applied for a job. So think how much communication with every person back and forth versus you have this link and and people could right away just book and you could also even have a a a block of hours dedicated for for that project and only those hours are dedicated for for this project. So people could be very creative with uh, once you know the challenges you're facing and speaking to somebody like you or anybody that does this type of services creatively there's so many ways of to accomplish some today's day and age uh, um, um, you know automation and in, in the processes um i will share a couple of things that we have done together in ptex which i think just to give more people ideas of what could be automated so we spoke about uh, lead generation so obviously if you have a website in an, in a, let's say if you go to the new ptex group dot uh, com website and obviously we have recently uh, rebranded and built a beautiful website and if for our listeners if they did not check it out yet go and check it out because there's a ton of resources there from the podcast to blog posts to case studies so go go to check it out but if you fill out forms and there's different forms there's a form somebody who says i want to join the mailing list there's forms somebody wants to be a guest blog on the put a guest blog on the site there's a form of contact us. There is um, those different things need to be can come into the same place. These needs to be right away put into f- the different buckets to to actually respond to that. Same as with inquiries, different people will respond based on the inquiry request. So that's a place where you could automate and distribute leads and distribute contact us. To, uh, you know, different inquiries to different people. Now the same is with the follow up. We said about the soul, the whole sales process. There's a ton of follow up. For instance. We use, and this is another point that I want to make, which um, today with technology, once upon a time, you had one system and you had to be limited to the UI, with the user interface, the user experience, the functions of that one system. And now you have to force every single person in your team, regardless of where, which department they are, to use this one custom system. And you can see still companies that have legacy softwares from years ago, and they just can't move away because for years there have been everything built in that system. Today, if you have somebody that does proposals and they want to use a, a simple tool, let's say PandaDuck that we use, which is very customizable and very simple to use and beautiful templates out there. But the CRM they use is PipeDrive, which is another tool that uh, you've set up. But now you don't have to send over contact information from one system to the other, automation. So as soon as the lead comes in, all the systems that potentially will need it gets the same pieces of information. So now you have, in our case, probably four or five systems, every lead that comes in, four or five systems will get it, regardless who is using which system, starts off and that, that, that contact is there. They don't have to say, wait a minute, what's that inquiry I got? What's that person's email address? What's the person's, everything is there. And the inquiry is, is syncing up between the different systems. So another reason not to force on technology to your team because at the end of the day you're using technology to enhance your business and if you feel a certain part of your team is going to be more adaptive than others try to figure out which tool they they would actually make sure to use and see if with automation you could just sync it them up instead of forcing them on to one system for everybody such an important point another point that i would want to mention is the whole onboarding of a client and I think that's that's another step that we have been using a lot of automation of it once a person becomes a client to make sure that that internal and external, internally letting the you know the team know that a new client is onboarded, accounting let, letting the person know that this is the information for invoicing purposes, and they have the information from the from the proposal directly, letting the client know that who is going to be their account executive and so on and so forth. These things it just enhances the experience. So that's not so much, sometimes it's not so much to, instead of a, a, a manual process, but it's, there's also a ton of what you could enhance the experience of that onboarding the client and so on and so forth. In our case, just to throw it out there, you could have a new client that needs, we need to create a Dropbox folder uh, in our system that we're using for time tracking, accounting. These are all different systems that b- it's being created. Now, all these systems, automatically a folder gets created. So now when somebody starts working, says, oh, I need to create a new folder. I need to start putting in the name of the client. These are all sitting and waiting there as soon as we start working on that project. These are all functions that you could automate. And again, I'm just giving you an example for our listeners because think, you know, not in the box, but out of the box, how those things would apply to your setup and see how you could do it for your business. 
also about internal. And I think this is some, this is one of the people just don't look at it that way because most of the people, when they look at systems and processes, they're looking about ex- external, looking about them with clients, them with uh, the difference. Um, but they never look to enhance the experience of their own employees and their own onboarding process. So you speak about HR. HR is now a huge, huge function of every company. You want to make sure that people from the interviewing process, from the actually from the inquiry, from the sending, uh, you know, actually applying for the job, the whole onboarding process, till if they got if they got the job, and then the onboarding process, the training process, getting them to know a little bit about the culture and so on and so forth. That's also a beautiful process that you can now automate with so many so easily with so many simple systems out there. Very cost effective. You know, people think that it needs to cost thousands of dollars to create something like that. And all of a sudden, you don't have to remind the person that, wait a minute, a new employee is starting tomorrow and make sure that there's a phone, a computer set up and stuff like that. All of those things can be automated. And think for a moment, how many times you had a new employee come in and they say, oops, we forgot to set up a phone. Or we forgot to put that. The IT didn't get notified about a new computer. Now, if you know a person starts in two weeks from now, this, that same day, an email could be fired off to the IT department, speak to this and this direct report, they're getting a new candidate, ask them what they need. A ticket could be created. Whatever whatever system works for you, but so much out of that manual process. So I think that's something that people should start realizing just from a, from a, from a managing that process. But then then comes the part which is just the being the going above and beyond on culture. Uh, in our case, we have our core values. Pretty, we're pretty vocal about it, and you could see it on our website. You could see it in the office. But a new hire gets hired; they could have a campaign, and, uh, giving them those, you know, dripping them those those emails in a little bit. Yeah, every day is a different value. Yeah, but not only that; it's also encouraging them to respond. So it's not like a one-off, automated, very cold type of of system. It's actually a warm email, and it's it's encouraging them to respond back, which infuses that back and forth uh, with with the direct report or with leadership and so on and so forth. So, those are just ideas where you could start, regard on day to day activity in your company, to figure out. So, I'm just giving the, those couple of ideas. Now, let me go back to you, uh, Nathan. There's a lot of people that ask the question that you know, is the premise of automation to replace jobs? Or is it to enhance jobs? Like, what's your like? What's your response when somebody would ask you that? Automation is not going to replace anyone's job. Not even AI is going to replace anyone's job. Oh, <laughs> automation is here to enhance what you do throughout the day. We have so many tasks. Like we we're running after like we're drowning in busy work. Okay, and nobody nobody wants that. And automation is here to basically eliminate or reduce the busy work that you're busy with you know we all have 24 hours in the day you know like the same 24 hours a day but everyone is spending it differently like uh, how if if you can focus on meaningful high value tasks throughout the day uh, it will make all the difference uh, you'll feel better you'll accomplish more you'll be more efficient so this is what automation is is here to do. It's not going to replace anyone's job. And I want to touch on, on one point that you mentioned earlier about about having different apps. Yeah, like, like there are all the jack of all trade apps that do every, they promise to do everything. But uh, if you have a, a, an app that 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 promises to do everything, most of the time they only do most of the things seventy percent of the time. You know, so. Now with with automations, you can choose. For example, you mentioned PandaDuck. PandaDuck is phenomenal for agreements and contracts. But you know, if if your CRM maybe does uh, agreements or contracts, uh, it's maybe it's not a hundred percent there, and you want to use PandaDuck. You now you're able to do that because it's so easily integrated with any of the other tools. So you can basically choose the apps that you use and are familiar with and stick with that and integrate make it talk to each other so you get you get the value 100 percent for every from every tool yeah it just reminds me and another point that actually just using our own use case so which uh, you help build out so a lot of times um, you have executives that would just want high level information 
And that high level information sometimes is, is simple to just see it in, in, in Excel or Google Doc, whatever, just very simple Google Docs. So we have a system where, where we have a level 10s and our, our scorecard numbers and measures and so on and so forth, where that information will be pulled from multiple places. But we could just open one Google, Google Sheet and, and see everything right there and then. Even the information is coming from different places. So instead of sitting in a meeting and saying, let's open up this dashboard to see this and that dashboard to open that, and, and now be busy like digging into different uh, uh, tabs within a software, you know, if that software is great for time tracking, let the t- people that need to time track use that system. But for reporting purposes, there's so many great tools out there that could just pull the data and report back to you as, as a leader. So sometimes you could see leaders um, being stuck on a certain system because that's the easiest for them. You could probably stay with that system that's easier for you and still give a, li- a little bit more of a robust, more of a, a custom software for the team that needs to work on that and just have automation pull the data so you, everybody has their view of the data. Exactly. And, and, and without automation, what, what you would you do? You would export CSV files. You would like copy, paste data. Who wants to do that? And this is what automation takes, like, re, like eliminates, right? Why, why the need to, 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 nobody wakes up in the morning and like, okay, I'm going to export CSV files today. Like, <laughs> yeah, you want to look at the data. You want to make decisions, right? This is what you, you're here for. So. Yeah, just uh, it reminds me of something that I, I always say is, as, a, as a benchmark is understand that everything you do, you're burning calories. Every single step, you're burning calories. You have to ask yourself, is this task worth I should burn calories over? <laughs> or maybe I could use automation to burn the calories for me. And you focus on those most important things, things that automation cannot do, things that AI cannot do, and stuff that, that I could I need the human interaction, human intelligence to actually produce and so on and so forth. So I think that's very important. I love that. I love that. You only have so many calories to burn <laughs> throughout the day. So <laughs> Exactly. So let me ask you something. Is automation something that you set up and forget about it? Is it something that it's like as a business owner, they want to set it up? Like what's the normal process you usually tell people to be prepared for if they start doing automation? Great question. And, and it depends, of course. You know, like uh, you can set up a an automation and totally forget about it. It runs, it, sm- it goes smoothly, it's, it's, it's great. But sometimes processes change. One example would be also a, a travel agent. Uh, during COVID, you needed to check certain things, you know, like uh, when you went to different countries, everyone had their different regulations and the regulations change every single day, uh, almost. So, or, or somebody like them, you know, it needed to update their processes every like when they get an, got a new client and the regulation changed. We need to update the, the automation because like the, it reminded them of certain tasks related to, to the COVID regulation. So it, it, it all depends. But yeah, you can have automation that basically lives in the background and works perfectly for years. Now, let me ask you, um, you know, obviously business owners listening to this, they always are looking for what's my ROI, what's my return on investment. So I'm going to spend money on software, I'm going to spend money on somebody helping us implement it or whatever is needed, a company like yours. And I want to know, am I getting a good return on investment? How do you, like, what, what, what are the KPIs, key performance indicators you would tell a person, like, what, how do they measure return on investment on, on, on automation? Yeah, simple, simple way to look at it is how how do you value your time your time like uh, how how do you value your team's time like do you, would you like to pay your team to export uh csv files like uh, to copy paste data like the the be- you know have them focus on on the work that that's meaningful uh, that the revenue generating tasks not not mundane dull tasks that can totally be automated. So it's a, it's, it's a matter of, of how much you value your time. So there are different calculations that can be done, like for ROI. You know, it's, it's just a matter of like how you value your time. Let's talk a little bit about AI. So AI is, 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 is people confuse AI with, um, with automation. Obviously, AI is, is artificial intelligence. Now you see a lot of tools are build, are merging their tools, capabilities with AI. What have you seen how AI is actually in helping uh, automation in general? 
Yeah, AI is, is uh, the new shiny object. <laughs> and uh, everyone talks about it. And we're, as far as I know, we're only in the tip, the, the tip of the iceberg. Like it's, we're only getting started. And yeah, AI is already being used as part of automation now, like a lot. So uh, one good example would be that we've recently implemented is um, as simple as summarizing a request that we received online into a subject line. So when the automated re email response that goes out has the details, like three or four words about their request in the subject line, it increased the open rates tremendously because it's relevant to them not, versus receiving an email, your request or whatever, you know, like uh, that, that's one small example. What would you say, what, what else have you seen, let's say, on the people that are using automation for in the sales process? So, and their sales process is, it's just uh, AI in, in your CRM is, is becoming a big deal now. Like uh, HubSpot, Pipedrive now has uh, AI. You can use chatbots, like it's like every every day there's new new technology coming out. But one one way that I recently saw is is you can have like a chatbot, basically chat with your CRM, like this. Maybe you have a salesperson that you used to like. Hey, what is the status with this and that lead? How many leads did we close? I know you can have a dashboard, but it's easy to to chat with your CRM basically and get all the data that you need. You know, pull a report of this and this and that, and it gives you the report. So it's, it's, it's phenomenal, yeah. And another, another thing that uh, we're actually working on it right now for PTEX for this exact podcast is, you know, when, when a guest submits the information, uh, their bio and what they do and uh, all the details about them, you can have AI generate a list of questions. You may not use it, but it gives you inspiration of, of, of what, what, you know, it's another example of, of, of uh, utilizing AI as part of automation. Yeah, so like for our listeners, just a fun fact. Um, people always ask me, how do I have time to do those episodes and spend so much time? You know, there's a lot going on, and which a lot is going on. But um, when I committed to do the show uh, for our audience and for our listeners to be able to enjoy, and I think we're going uh, close to 200 episodes strong wow. in, in four years, I think it is. But one of the ways... From the get-go, if you remember, uh, when we spoke about it, I said, I need to automate as much as I can. And I think we have about 23 steps that are automated for the show and, and anything and everything that we could automate in the process, not to take away the human interaction with the guest or human interaction with us speaking out live and recording this, but all the other nuances of, of me sending the recording to the producer, producer getting uh, the document to create, uh, teasers and so on and so forth, the guest scheduling and, and reminding them they need to upload their bio and their photo um, and, and reminding our team that if we did receive it, if we didn't receive it and whatever it is, all of those things could be automated. And I would never be, and then this is just a public shout out to you because I would never be able to produce this for our audience on a regular basis without uh, real automation and constantly looking at how, what else we could improve in the automation process to, to be able to simplify the process for producing content. So it's just another way. Yeah, I, I remember you said that you're not going to do it if it takes too much time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think we did the calculation and we end, I think we ended up saving like two hours per episode. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, just uh, as for, I'll put it in the show notes, but if uh, people go to the Zapier Swept blog and maybe search for Flow Digital or maybe PTEX Group, uh, you might see a full case study. You might find a full case study, how many steps were automated for the show. It's probably outdated already by now because we added a bunch of steps since. But just to give you the, 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 the inspiration of what else, what, what could be um, automated. Now, I want to turn the conversation. We've spoken a lot about automation and the takeaway for our listeners is not to look at automation or AI as, as a shiny object, but rather look, what could you really, what could get, get you back time? What could save you time? What could enhance the process, the, the experience with the existing employee, with the internal team 
and external leads and so on and so forth and see what you could automate to help boost your productivity. At the same time, you're also growing a team, your own, and you're building your own company. It's an agency and has all the, the ups and downs of an agency and as every business has. One of the things I know you have set up, set yourself up uh, a little different than let's say Ptex is you have most of your employees remote. What are you doing in order to build a culture and making sure that the team is on board with understanding the vision of where you're going with the company and ultimately making sure that client success is is up to par to your to what you expect. Yeah, all, all of our team members are, are remote. I took a page out of Zapier's playbook. Zapier is a thousand person company and they're all remote from day one. And culture culture is something I have learned at Ptex Group. Thank so you. Ptex is first and foremost focusing on culture and I, I, I will never forget that. Like I, I, I loved every single day that I, I went to work at Ptex and I, I, still, I still miss it. Appreciate it. So uh, what we do is, is first, when it comes to technology, uh, people get stuck. You, know, like, uh, you can be the best expert, but you can come to a scenario where, where you don't know what to do. Or maybe you need a, a second pair of eyes on something that you've built, right? So we have a, we, we, as a remote team, we use Slack for communication. So we have a, a channel called Help. And we just help each other out every single day. They're like, especially for, for remote teams. And there's uh, not, 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 there's no face to face meetings. Uh, so having that channel, for example, is one way of building culture. Like, People help each other out every single day. Do you have like, uh, let's say, when you onboard a new team member, uh, how do you like do anything to, in particular that you do um, from merch or onboarding uh, stuff that you do that that just gets them excited to who you are as a company? Yeah, of course. Uh, onboarding is, is is a big is a big deal. We everyone gets a a package in the mail when they when they come on board. It includes like a a mug. With the logo, like a, a cap and a T-shirt, um, yeah. And, and one one thing that we took a page out of the Ptex uh, playbook is a Monday huddle. We have every Monday we have a huddle that the whole team joins and uh, can bring up anything, and we have the high fives as well. So, <laughs> culture is something I learned at Ptex. Nice. Is it at this point, are you in touch with every employee or do you have other? other? Yeah, we're, we're only at 12 people. So I, I'm, I, yeah, I meet with everyone uh, one-on-one. Very cool. So um, if people want to, what's your process if people want to um, start the process of automation or at least have a consultation to see what they could automate it? What's your process and how do you work with people? First of all, it's like we have to review the processes that that, need, that they want to automate. Uh, uh, something that uh, that is automatable, it needs to be something repetitive. You, know, you do it you do it often and it, you do it digitally. So it happens. But that's something somebody, somebody would schedule a consultation call with you? Sure. So yeah, just go slow.digital and uh, book a free discovery call. You'll answer a couple of questions and... Uh, We'll answer any any of your questions. Got it. Um, I know that you're also vocal on LinkedIn. Um, um, is there any other platform that you put out content? LinkedIn mostly. I'm also also X Twitter. Got it. Yes, for the links, resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes at www.ptechgroup.com slash podcast, where we'll link to Flow Digital, flow.digital and we'll also link to Nathan's uh, LinkedIn account so you could follow him for automational, uh, for, for tips on autom- automation and, and, and case studies. Let's close with the four rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Ooh. Number one, a book that changed your life. Ooh, a book that changed my life. Uh, there are a couple of books, but I remember uh, I read a lot of books at Ptex. You know, we, we every, all employees get rewarded for reading books. So one is good to great. Yeah, great book. I think you were a fan of Ma- uh, Malcolm Gladwell's books, no? 
Uh, Malcolm Gladwell is phenomenal, phenomenal. It's it's great entertainment. It didn't change my life though. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay, good to great is a great great business book. Yeah. Number two, a piece of advice you got that you never forget. Hmm. Version one is better than version none. Exactly. I know who said that. <laughs> Number three, anything you wish you could go back and do differently? Yes. Yeah, so when I started out, I, I was not big at doing SOPs, standard operating procedures. And I, I, like, I didn't even think that I'm gonna, like, we're going to grow so fast. So like during COVID, like things exploded. Everyone wanted to automate as much as possible. So like I started out on my own, automated a lot of our own processes, but like I never created standard operating procedures from my own team. And as we grew, it became an issue. So I had to went, go back, take, take th- things out of my brain and put it on paper so other, others can follow it. A good point. And number four and last final question, what's still on your bucket list to achieve? <laughs> Great question. So we want to create a newsletter. We know a lot of people have a lot of questions about automation and they want to know uh, everything about it. So we're, we're, we have on our bucket list to start a newsletter. We also want to start the online community that people can ask questions. So these, these two things are on my bucket list. Beautiful. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. I know your time is valuable. That is why in our name of our listeners, we'll forever be grateful for sharing some of your time with us today. It's been a blast. Thank you so much, Manny. Great catching up. That's my conversation with Nathan Weil. My takeaway from this one, number one, identify repetitive tasks. Start by listing out all repetitive tasks in your business processes. Those are prime candidates for automation and can significantly reduce manual workload. Number two, set clear objectives. Define what you aim to achieve with automation, such as reducing errors, saving time, or improving customer satisfaction. Clear goals will guide your automation strategy. Number three, lead generation. Use tools like chatbots on your website to engage visitors and capture leads automatically. Platforms like HubSpot, Infusionsoft, Keep can automate email campaigns to nurture leads. Number four, Choose the right tools. Research and select automation tools that align with your business needs. Consider factors like ease of use, integration capabilities, and consumer support. And last and final, premium models. Take advantage of freemium versions of automation tools to get started without a significant upfront investment. Tools like MailChimp offer free plans for small businesses. Once you get started and you see automation works for you, then you can always go up and start paying for those automational tools. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the Let's Look Business podcast. I hope you enjoyed the practical, no-nonsense advice that our guests shared. If you found value in listening, I would be so grateful if you could share the episode with your friends. And if you could give the show a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever platform you listen. Subscribe to the show and get notified every time we publish a new episode. The Let's Look Business podcast is a P-Tex Group original production. Until next time, make it a great day.